and I'm ready to try this recently and see what. Uh, do you want us to try the food first? Uh, how, you walk. Why don't we it. try it on it? Why don't, don't we try it on its own? Yep. Um, and then we'll take think what you think of it. Then then we'll yep. have a bite of the food, taste it again, and see how they pair up. Sure. Watch how everything marries. Yeah, together. absolutely. And, uh, and what are we looking for when we taste? Just roughly. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're going to get, like I said, a little bit of sweetness. Mm. Um, certainly in the nose, it's going to be a little lychee, a little tropical fruit. Notes, yeah. Definitely, though, some wet stone in the background. It's got great minerality. It smells yummy. Mm. Mm. And then as you drink, you can feel that acidity. Your mouth will start to water um, all the way up the back of your cheeks. The crisp still. That's it. Absolutely. I got it. Yeah, and I that's the in. acidity and the sugar really play well off each other. Jason, Keep it I being crisp. Let's go. Dive this is, this is uh, <laughs> let's try this out and see what we're doing. I'm going after I'm going all in. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> it's great that they're bite sized. That does work well. Yeah, it is so yummy. When you're doing a food and wine pairing, that is there yummy. That's a few a great different choice. things that are going to happen. Um, first of all, there are very few that are going to be really truly mm -hmm. awful. Mm -hmm. um, I think the worst that usually happens is the food's going to taste okay, mm -hmm. the wine's going to taste okay, neither of them are great. Um, and then what you're looking for, obviously, is for them to work together to something really yeah. magical happen. That is a, it's a fantastic pairing. It's, it's almost as if the wine is the second half of the experience. Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of taking those notes, as you said, that they're kind of tart, not tart, but the bright acidity from the, from the vinegar sauce and kind of carrying it through to a, a sailing. I think that was, that, was a, that was a great choice. Great. That's, yep. Um, yep. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to try this again. And also, uh, we also said the acidity, you mentioned the saline finish, and that's salt in food, mm -hmm. when it gets too high, can really diminish acid as well. So when you have something with salt yeah. and acid, you definitely want an acidic wine, nice, uh, nice acidic great. wine. Great, great. And it doesn't really happen in whites. You can get it in reds as well, but definitely usually something from a cooler climate, mm -hmm. going to maintain a little more acidity in the grapes, something not quite as ripe. It's a great balance. I tell you, it just marries well. Excellent. What are curiously? What are just maybe what's one other wine that you might suggest for a dish such as this? You know, as I had uh, thought about that, there are a couple, and they're both sparklers. Um, I think one of my favorites with Asian foods in general, yep. um, Asian inspired foods, is a Moscato. Um, we particularly like uh, the Lacerra Moscato de Asti, quality Moscato. region to produce Moscato. I mean, there are hundreds on the market right now. If you go with the Moscato de Asti, you're going to get really great quality. The sugar in the Another wine. appreciated wine. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's so many in the, the bubbles, it's great. And also champagne. Um, champagne is really, really high acid wine. The bubbles are great to wash fat off the palate. And uh, people only think of it for celebrations, and I think right. is. People should think of it with food all the time. Or sparkling it's, wine, maybe, that just, yeah. just don't be scared? No, it's one of the f few wines that I think most people who agree on will go from the beginning of the meal all the way through dessert and handle everything pretty well if you had to pick one wine. It's a great desert island those, wine. Those absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Jason, we're moving on to our second pairing here. Uh, what are we drinking? Um, what we have tonight is a little uh, Nebbiolo da Alba, um, producer is Milano, 2009. Um, not sure if you're familiar, Nebbiolo is a grape that is in uh, Barolo, Barbaresco, two greatest wines of uh, the Piedmont. Um, unfortunately, those wines are incredibly expensive. Um, they can be out of reach um, for a lot of people, especially for an everyday meal. Um, if you're just coming into a quick steak or even in your backyard throwing something on the grill, do you want to open up a $75 bottle of wine? Maybe not. Uh, Nebbiolo, Dalba. Declassified, grown outside the Barbaresco and Barolo production zones, um, but still very good, especially depending on the producer. And uh, I think we can talk a little bit about the more, about the pairing once we see the uh, dish that we're going to pair that with. And uh, what are we seeing? Let's bring it over. All right. Well, it's And this is this is our fillet of beef Wellington. Uh, I'm sure we've heard of this uh, classic preparation. Um, consists of a tenderloin of beef. A little sauteed spinach, a little pan seared foie gras, a little mushroom duxelle, all wrapped in a puff pastry and bake. Um, 
you know, I think we were talking a little bit earlier in terms of uh, the protein and the meat pairing reds with reds and whites with whites. In this case, the filet, very lean meat. However, because we have the foie gras, a lot of fat, the puff pastry, very buttery. The finished dish is very, very rich. Uh, Let me turn this. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see exactly what's going on in here. We're going to uh, actually pour this, put the aerodemic okay. glaze on as well. This is going to add a little touch of sweetness to the finish. And the horsemen have uh, previously rated this, and it was phenomenal. Uh, okay. Right now, outside, it was phenomenal. Uh, it, it was a great effort. And, uh, and I think, in terms of preparing uh, dishes that have this much richness, this much fat, uh, a grilled ribeye, um, some steak with a lot of marbling, a lot of fat, or something with like the foie gras, what you're going to want in your wine is tannin. Um, tannin on its own, a back porch wine, probably not. It's got a strong structure, it's very drying. Uh, but when you pair it with food, tannin actually kind of binds to the fat molecules, takes it off your palate. Uh, makes a dish much more harmonious. Um, and this Nebbiolo Alba, not quite as huge. It's not the very tannic expression that a Barolo might be. It's on the softer side of a, a Nebbiolo expression. What year was it? It's a 2009. Okay. Which, uh, excellent year. Um, pretty much all over Europe for the most part. Um, and so this wine is a great, great Nebbiolo. Very tannic usually, even though it's a softer expression. Definitely has the tannin and the weight to carry a dish like this. So what's an example of a, a wine you would avoid pairing with a heavier, richer dish such as this? You know, something, uh, a burgundy, mm. uh, a little Pinot Noir. Yep. Beautiful, maybe the filet on its own yep. would be a perfect match. Lower fat, it'll take that lighter, more supple red. Um, a duck breast without the skin might be a great match. But once you get into something with a lot of marbling, a lot of tannin, or a lot of richness, I think uh, Pinot, which has a lower tannin profile, or even a big jammy Shiraz, oh, yeah. not terribly tannic it's gonna feel clumsy with it. Right, right, so right. I think this wine, which by the same token, probably would rather drink those on their own mm -hmm. or something, but with food. Have some Italian wine with a bit of cheese, a little bit of meat, even an appetizer, changes the game completely. Well, it's, it's great to see an Italian wine, for example, paired rather than just going to the, the go-to Merlot or Cabernet. So many people might just think a lot about it. Yeah, and it's got some great earthiness as well, which picks okay. up the mushroom notes, I think, in the dish. And it's hard to stop. Just, you know, Keep from diving into this, just staring at it. Well, it's take it to the It's a nice sitting Very, very nice. But I can't wait to sit back and enjoy the Barolo.